Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah. It's Tuesday. I'm on schedule this week, sort of. Okay, so (laughs) this is related, so I'm only going off on a slight tangent, but um, I told you on Friday's episode how my husband had been really sick, and he was great. On Friday, you know, for the whole day on Friday after he was done at four in the morning. And then he was great on Friday until Saturday at about noon, 1230. And then it started again. This time was only eight hours. But still, it was still eight hours, which is just crazy. He has been not fine, but he has not thrown up since Saturday. Thank goodness. So I think we're on the other side of it. I really hope so. And I think we have an idea of what we can do to prevent it in the future. We, you know, it's kind of a work in progress, but the reason that I tell you this is that at the end of the last episode, you know, at the end of episodes, I always tell you what interview is coming up next. I should maybe stop doing that because life happens and this actually involves two different reschedules. So I said I was going to be interviewing Logan Steiner about her book After Anne, and I am still doing that. That has just been moved to Thursday this week because that episode will come up on Friday. The interview's on Thursday because that interview was scheduled originally for Saturday, and I did not want to try to interview someone while my poor hubby was in the other room hurling his guts out. I I didn't think that would be good for any of us, especially not Logan, (laughs) who did not need to potentially hear that. Well, certainly not you either, right? If I'm trying to record and you hear that in the background, no. Logan was very sweet and said, yes, no problem. Go take care of your hubby. We can reschedule. So that interview will be on Friday. I had already rescheduled an interview for yesterday from the beginning of December um, for the author I'm speaking to today, Diane Bame. She had a conflict in the early part of December, and we got it rescheduled for Monday, yesterday. So um, it's just, like I said, it involves two different reschedules for two completely different reasons, and that's just the way life is and what life throws at you. So that was my weekend. Sunday was very, very quiet, thankfully, just resting and recuperating for the hubby, and um, my my girl dog was also sick on Saturday. It was just, it was, it was coming from everywhere. Me and the boy dog, we were the ones holding down the fort for uh, cleaning up after the other two, but um, thankfully, everyone is okay now. Hubby's still recovering. He's dehydrated, etc., but he's, he's on the mend, um, so... Thank you for your concern over him, and he is hopefully just going to keep being on the mend because he's losing way too much weight this way. This is not the best way to lose weight. Um, So that was my weekend. I hope your weekend was much, much better. Other than that, it was, we got some rain, which is great, makes everything green. We got some sunshine. Sunday was this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful blue sky over the field next to our house. And I was, I made a post on Instagram or Facebook or something saying that, you know, I grew up with always wanting a white Christmas, grew up in Montana. Here, because we get rain in the wintertime. It's more like spring here in the wintertime because we get all the rain and everything turns green and the the field next to our house um, 
blooms in this amazing just blanket of yellow flowers. I'm dreaming of a yellow Christmas doesn't have quite the same <laughs> ring to it as someone rightfully pointed out to me on that post. But it's just beautiful. And then the sky on Sunday was this amazing blue, not a cloud in the sky. Those all came yesterday with the rain. So we had very different weather Sunday and Monday, but just, oh my gosh, it was beautiful. I just had to take a picture and send it to my sister who unfortunately is in the midst of snow. Okay, that's probably enough out of me. As I mentioned, Diane Bame is my guest today. She is a children's book author. We are going to talk about her book, Charlie and the Tire Swing. Let me go ahead and give you the description of that book. Charlie and the Tire Swing is an intergenerational story told from the perspective of Charlie and his grandpa, Jack. Over a cup of hot chocolate, Charlie's grandfather tells the story of how he planted an acorn with his own grandfather, Charlie's great great grandpa George and how he tenderly cared for it and watched it grow from one season to the next. He shares that over the years as the acorn grew into a mighty oak tree, how each generation enjoyed the shade of the tree, climbing it, reading under it, and gathering together as a family around it. It's a story of growing strong family ties, of sharing stories from generation to generation, and of appreciating nature and the simple things in life, like swinging on a tire swing. That is, as I said, the description of Charlie and the Tire Swing, subtitled How It Began. This is the first in um, multiple books about Charlie and his adventures. The author is, uh, I said Diane Bame. She does write under Diane Floyd Bame. I should be more specific about that. I apologize. And it is illustrated by Judy Gaudet, I think is how Diane pronounced her last name, G-A-U-D-E-T. So either Gaudet or Gaudet, depending on how it is pronounced. And that is the book. You know I love children's books. You know I love reading to children. Um, I really appreciate the intergenerational nature of this. That is the first in a series of Charlie's adventures. I am happy to find out what adventure Charlie is going to have next, where his imagination might take him. So let's go ahead and let Diane talk about this creation of hers. Again, it is called Charlie and the Tire Swing. The author is Diane Floyd Bame. And let's turn now to that conversation. Hi, Diane. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, well, thank you for having me. I'm excited about today. I'm excited to have you and to talk to you about your books. Um, before we do that, though, if you wouldn't mind um, just sharing a little bit about yourself so my listeners can get to know you a bit, that would be wonderful. Oh, sure. I'd be happy to. So um, I live in Texas, but I've uh, traveled and lived in various countries. And so that's been an exciting part of my life because I love being with people from um, other cultures and uh and just, you know, learning and understanding the beauty of the earth. I um, have a degree in education in elementary ed and kinder. And um, not only did I teach in the classroom, but I was one of the first teachers to bring technology into the classroom. So that took me to uh, training teachers across the United States as well as in Europe and um, on how to use a computer effectively in the classroom. So that was pretty exciting. And then from there, um, let's see, what else? I've sung on stage. I've acted on stage. I um, have lots of dogs, <laughs> or, but one at a time, obviously. And um, what else? I love life. There you go. That's wonderful. And I love that you got to travel as part of your work. Do you have a favorite place that you've traveled? Oh my gosh, how do you ever pick a favorite I know. place? Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. You know, place, right? because, yeah, exactly. Because, I mean, the people in the Philippines are so beautiful. They're so amazing. They can sing like you cannot believe. And then you go all the way to um, different countries that I've been in in Africa. And um, how can you not fall in love with all the the beauty of Kenya and Ethiopia and the people and their hearts are so gorgeous. So, um, and then I lived in the Middle East for 14 years. So it's really hard for me to choose because I just find beauty in every place. Oh, and I also did, um, dog sledding in the Arctic for breast cancer and that was incredible. I think oh, wow. the angels, yeah, I think the angels go there. Um, to get a deep breath because the air is so pure and, and gorgeous. And 
I think if they get mad at us humans, oh my gosh, why are they not listening to me? <laughs> they go up there to breathe in some good fresh air. <laughs> Give themselves a time out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, next time I will not ask you your favorite place. I'll just, I'll, I'll ask you your favorite kid instead. It might be. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, but makes sense that you are, you know, you were an educator. You've worked with, with in some capacity with child development. You write children's books. So that makes perfect sense. And we are here to talk about your book, Charlie and the Tire Swing. Can you give an overview of the story? Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, Charlie and the Tire Swing is about a little boy who loves to use his imagination on his tire swing. And how did he acquire this first book? is all about how he acquired that tire swing because I wanted to bring in generations. So in this book, the little boy learns, you know, from his grandpa about his great grandpa giving his grandpa a tire swing. And then it goes from there. And then the tire swing becomes Charlie's. And I think it's really important that um, children realize their family history, that's so important to me. And so, of course, I work in the grandmother as well. And um, and then they have this amazing time together. And you'll be seeing more stories about Charlie and his adventures in um, years to come. There is your introduction to Diane and Charlie and the beginning of Charlie's adventures. Let's go ahead and take our first break for this episode. When we come back, we'll be talking a little bit more about Charlie and that acorn that grows into the oak that houses his tire swing. Stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Are you tired of the same old news? Are you sick of the seemingly endless political spin and negativity? The GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast is a weekly news podcast covering all the top positive and uplifting news stories. We cover stories that will inspire, uplift, and remind you of the good in the world. Tune into the Golden State Media Concepts America Still Beautiful podcast to get all the great and positive news stories of today. Download the GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast on iTunes. Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and my conversation with Diane Floyd Bame. We are talking about Charlie and his tire swing. This is the beginning of Charlie's adventures. And Diane just finished introducing us to Charlie and to this particular book in those adventures. So let's return now to that conversation. And we also get a sense of the timing about, you know, just how long it takes a tree to grow because uh, one of the other generations planted the acorn that, that grows into the tree. And so we get we get to see that process through the story as well. I am so happy you brought that. There's so many little pieces to the story. And the illustrator, um, uh, Julie Godet, she did such a fabulous job bringing in um, the whole fact that it takes so long for a tree to grow and Charlie, um, the grandpa, Charlie, he, uh, he can't, it's actually Jack. He actually, you know, would go and look and see there's nothing growing. And then finally a little twig appears. And, and then today with Charlie, it's this humongous oak tree. And actually that oak tree that, um, we used as a model for the story exists in my husband's home that he grew up in because um, it was planted in the 1940s and it's uh takes over the whole side yard now it's so big oh i love that that you had a you had a model you had, you had an actual tree that you know is important to your family's history that that's wonderful um did you have a specific inspiration to tell the story about Charlie and his tire swing? Actually, I did. When I was a young mom, uh, my son, 
loved his tire swing, which was in our family backyard on a huge tree, but we don't live there anymore. That's why I chose my husband's uh, tree. Um, and my son absolutely loved his tire swing and he would use his imagination. So Charlie is really my son who he would say, mama, mama, come out. I'm ready to go into space, you know, and he would just be making up a story or, oh, mama, mama, come here. I'm, you know, I'm Dick <laughs> Tracy. And he'd just have one adventure after another. And, and uh now that he's all grown up and I'm writing children's books, I thought, you know, children love adventures. And uh I thought, well, what a wonderful way. I'll just build on what my uh son's adventures were and, and honor him and his imagination. And what does he think of the stories since they're based on his childhood? Oh my gosh, he absolutely loves it. And uh he'll he gives me ideas now because <laughs> he has a little boy. And so uh he'll go, Well, didn't I do one about this mama? And I go, Actually, yeah, I believe you did. And and then we'll kind of work it out. So I've been writing some stories. They're not published yet, but I'm certainly working on them. What age group do you think would uh, enjoy this book most? Obviously, it can be read, at, you know, with families, with grownups and small children. Or, but do you have a particular age group in mind for the stories? Um, you know, each one of my stories are different. When I think about the age level, it depends on what the topic is. For um, Charlie, it's really uh, more of a first grade, second grade level because of the vocabulary. And um, and I do, I'm very careful about my vocabulary so that the children can have success in their reading. So I would definitely say um, first and second grade vocabulary. Makes sense. And do you have a particular hope for what readers will take away from the book, both um, young readers as well as the grown-ups reading with them? Yes, I do, actually. Thank you so much. That's so important. When the kids read any of my books, and in this case, Charlie, um, I want them to just embrace imagination. That's my tagline, is to love imagination. And in Charlie and the Tire Swing, I want them, you know, I, I want them to not even finish the whole book. I want them to go, what? What? Great grandparents. I've never heard my parents talk about great grandparents. And them to go, mom, dad, do I have a great grandma and grandpa? And, and spark up a whole conversation, you know, so that if I receive an email saying, oh my gosh, we started doing family history because of Charlie, then I have reached my goal. I'm so excited. I love your enthusiasm. Do you read your books to groups of children ever? Yes. When I'm invited to schools, um, I absolutely love reading to the kids. I'm so in my element because of my background in education. And I also get invited to different um, companies, stores, and so forth that um, set aside time for parents to uh, shop while their kids are being entertained and and read um, to the kiddos and ask them questions. And again, I get really excited when I'm reading the story. I'll actually add more things and interact with the kids. So it's not just, well, one day there was Charlie and he went to see his grandpa. I'm like, Oh my gosh, one day there was Charlie and he went to see his grandpa blah, 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 and, and just get the kids all excited too. <laughs> and do they, do they interact with you? And do they have questions like you're hoping that they will about grandparents or anything like that? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and, uh, and that's what makes it so exciting is when the children, um, have a lot of questions, then you know that again, that, that you did, you did good with your story. If they're silent, um, cause even a shy kid will come and start speaking and asking questions. Um, but if they're totally silent, then like you just, you know, you didn't ace it on that particular day. Luckily, that hasn't happened to me because I'm so animated, as you probably can tell in my voice. I can, yes. <laughs> I, lo I love situations like that because you're you're sitting there with a group of children and you just never know what's going to come out. <laughs> I mean, just the, you know, completely like it'll be Spider-Man or it will be. I remember one kid just completely out of the blue says to me, when you drink the water, then you have to pee. <laughs> we oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So I just, I love, you seem like you could definitely roll with those in a group situation with small children. So I love that. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I'd probably start giggling (laughs) and pray the mom's really close by. (laughs) Yeah. Um, You mentioned being very intentional and specific with your vocabulary. So um, how do you, when you sit down to write a book, you come up with the idea, obviously, but then what else do you do to make sure that you are getting across the intention that you hope the reader will take away from the book? Um, another excellent question. First of all, I'm one of these writers that I uh, don't plot things out. I come up with a story and it might, you know, it percolate is a good word in my brain for a while. And then all of a sudden it hits me and then I'll just go in and start writing the story after it's written. That's when I go back and do the editing and go, Oh my goodness, we need to think of a better word. This one's too big, you know? So, um, and, and so that's when all that happens and there'll be times that I'll look at a story and say, Oh my goodness, this is really long. I need to cut it down to the age level that I need it to be. So, um, and, and that takes work, you know, it just doesn't happen overnight, just so your listeners know. So, and there are two kinds of writers. There's the person who does plot everything out and it works beautifully with them. And, um, then there's the person like myself who just writes, 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 and then goes back and, um, edits and might even move things around. Um, and that's when my friends who are, um, who, um, map everything out go, you know, if you just map it out. And I'm like, but I don't think like that. <laughs> right. I, I've talked to both, both, both types include, as well as the, the middle ground of, I, I call them planters, the people who yeah. are a combination thereof. Yeah. It just it yeah. works differently for every author. You mentioned the, The illustrator, when you work with an illustrator, what is that process like? Do you, um, do you just give them the, the story and then they do the illustrations? Do you give suggestions? Can you talk about that relationship? Sure. That's another good relate, um, topic. The, I've been very blessed because I've worked with different illustrators and, um, I've made sure that they knew if they were working with me that, um, I wanted to have a little bit of input and not to destroy their imagination because I really want to see what comes out of their imagination. So they know that first they have, um, they'll, um, send suggestions and, and might be all in black and white first. And then we, we talk about it. And we develop a relationship. And from there, we I'll go, okay. So like, for example, um, Charlie, I really wanted to make sure he had blonde hair because I wanted him to kind of resemble my son. And, um, and so we went with that and she had a different hair color, but, um, <clears throat> that was no problem, right? And Boomer, um, the curious bunny, I really wanted him to look playful. And so, um, you know, we, we discussed that until we agreed what Boomer would look like. And once, um, those different, those conversations take place, then they have, um, full reign from there. Some of the illustrators, they like to do one or two pages, get approval. Great. Those two pages are done and, and go step by step by pages. Others want to do the whole thing and then go back. But I, tend to prefer doing, you know, a couple of pages at a time. That way we're always, um, you know, okay in it and never having to redo like a ton of pages over because it's very difficult. Most of the illustrators I've used are not using the computer. They're um, doing it the old fashioned way, you know, hand drawing and painting and so forth. So when you um, do that, you don't have all those different layers to just kind of change a part um, the um the character's arm or leg or whatever so it's yeah. best to go step by step it is time for our second break of this episode i'm always fascinated to find out how the relationship and the process works between a, an author and an illustrator if there's ever a conflict between what the author envisions and what the illustrator envisions maybe i'm too much of a type a personality uh, the, 
this is going to come up in, in my next question. So <laughs> we'll be talking more about the author illustrator relationship and how that works, especially, I mean, specifically in Diane's case. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC book review podcast, and I will be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and my interview with Diane floyd Bain. Before the break, she was talking about how she works with illustrator illustrators, especially the illustrator for Charlie and the Tire, Str- tire Swing. Why do I keep trying to say Tire String? My goodness. Tire Swing. Let's go back. We're picking up with that conversation right now. Is it ever difficult for you to give up a little bit of that control because I'm sure when you're writing you have images in your head and then you're you're trusting that process to someone else um again I know some people do have problem with that but no because I I trust that the discussion we had um and the way we agreed on the characters looks that and we also agreed on do we want it super bright color you know we we kind of set the mood and then once that's done and we've all agreed on it and I don't dictate it, like I want to hear what the illustrator has to say. Otherwise, what's the point to have an illustrator in my mind? And uh, and then I just love what they come up with because uh, they have their own imagination. And I love seeing the two, my imagination, blend in with theirs. I, I just find a lot of beauty in that. That's very nice. I, I like that, you know, you have, you, you try to make very intentional communication. I think that's, that's probably key. And I, I wanted to back up to when you were talking about writing and editing. I think people might sometimes think about children's books as being quote unquote easy to write. You know, you just sit down and you, and you write. It's a short story. It's only, you know, it's not that many words compared to a full length adult novel or even a middle grade novel. But I like that you are very intentional about the editing process and the, you know, everything that you do. Can you talk a little bit uh, more about that process and just, you know, it's not just sitting down and, and writing out the story and being done with it. Um, it's a little bit more than that. It sure is. And until I personally started writing uh, books for publishing, because I've always been a storyteller, um, hence the stage and so forth. But writing's so different. And children's books are more difficult in my mind in the sense of conveying the story. To me, the, the word selection is so important. And I actually make sure of the grade level of some vocabulary. And I know my publisher said, I really like to use this higher level vocabulary. And I said, well, I appreciate it. But no, the child will not be able to pronounce it yet. Because at that particular age, they haven't got the CH sound down yet. So I'm not willing to give that up. In other cases, if the if the book is for an older child and I know they can pronounce it, then that, that's fine um, to go ahead and, you know, take that suggestion from a publisher. 
But when I'm in the writing process and then I go back to the editing, I really do look at it one sentence at a time. And is that sentence conveying what I'm hoping will send the child into the imagination world of that particular book? And if I think that it's too heavy in the sense of too many words, then I'll have to really think how I can reduce that. And that really has happened to me. And the funny thing is, I personally, as a mom, never liked books filled with a page filled with lots of words. And yet, as a writer, I find I end up doing that. And so that's something that I'm working on and improving to um, have less words and let the um, art tell the story. Does that help? Yeah, that was great. Thank you. What about children's books specifically do you think that draws you to write um, with for that age group? Um, because I've, I'm comfortable with that age group. I've studied them, um, when I was in school, their mindset, their mind development, and then of course teaching for years. And I feel just so, I'm a kid at heart. And so stepping into imagination at their level is just totally fun for me. And, uh, I do have one young adult historical fiction book. Actually, I have two now. One just came out recently. And, um, and that's a whole different world and ball game that we can talk about another time if you wish. But the reason I mention it is that I appreciate both skill sets that authors have for children as well as young adults. And, um, but I still find children harder to write because you have to be able to come down to their level. You have to be able to be truthful in what you say because a child will know and they can sense it. And then of course the illustrations help provide the magic to the story because sometimes kids don't even want to hear the story itself. They just want to look at the picture and create their own story. And man, do I love that. When I'm in a classroom and I'll go, okay, I'm not going to read the story now. I just want you to look at the pictures and tell me what you see. And they'll go crazy. I love it. That sounds fun. I'm just thinking of uh, a little boy that I used to babysit who checked out the same book from the library just over and over and over again. Every time we'd go to the library, he'd get this book. And it didn't have words. It was just illustrations. And so you had to make up a story each time you read it. But he would insist that you tell it the same (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and they remember isn't that amazing <laughs> oh um yeah the truck book i'll never forget the truck book i don't remember thank you know thankfully he's not expecting me to read it to him now that he's 30 because i don't remember the story <laughs> <laughs> but i bet if he has kids he tells his story just the way he remembers it <laughs> you know what when he has kids i'm gonna find that book and give it to his kids <laughs> i love it um, are you working on another Charlie book now or something else? I do um have some short stories written for Charlie. Um, and I'm moving it into a short story instead of picture book um, so that it can be at a higher reading level. And then um, I have some other short stories going on. And Boomer the Curious Bunny was such a success that the publisher has asked me, to write more stories about Boomer. So I have three more stories of Boomer that'll be coming out and they'll be in picture book form. That's awesome. Congratulations. Thanks. You said you've always been a storyteller. Um, So what made you decide then to, to write for publication? Um, So I have three kids. They're all adults right now. And, um, Two, my, my two daughters, they all started singing and so forth, and I'm a singer. And then they started kind of comparing themselves to me, and I didn't want that. I wanted a, a mom relationship, not a singer-mom relationship. And so I quit singing. And one of the fun things I like to do is garden. I'm not great at it, but I do enjoy it. Um I've made mud pies and played in the mud ever since I was little. So gardening just makes sense, <laughs> playing in the mud. Um, anyway, 
I um, quit singing so that they could become better and not compare themselves to me. And it's not that I'm a great singer, but just, you know, children naturally do that. And so I was out in the garden one day and um, it dawned on me that I needed to start putting stories that I told in the classroom or made up stories with my kiddos to a print. And so I walked inside after I got cleaned up and I started writing. And ever since then, but it takes a long time to get, you know, published, but that's when it all happened was this inspiration in the garden. Gardens are a good place for those kinds of thoughts. Um, but, you know, something about, is there something about the dirt? Yeah, there is something about the dirt. But do you want to know something that's funny? So I stated how I, I quit singing, right? So then what do my daughters start doing? They're, they're writers. <laughs> so we just laugh. They're all grown up now. So we all laugh and write and sing together. So, but I they're just thought you think that was funny. Them. <laughs> it is time for our final break of this episode but it's, it's pretty clear that uh diane's daughters well she and her daughters have a good relationship and that they must look up to their mom in a lot of ways since they want to sing and write like her and they can all talk about that together i think that is wonderful when we come back diane will be giving her advice to aspiring authors stay tuned you're listening to the gsmc book review podcast and i will be right back Pets bring such joy to our lives, and the GSMC Pets Podcast is here to share in that joy. We'll tell stories of pets finding their forever homes, acting in unexpected ways, being helpful, or just being silly. Whether you love dogs, cats, llamas, reptiles, fish, or you've never met an animal you didn't like, the GSMC Pets Podcast is for you. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and the conclusion of my interview with Diane floyd Bain. From your own experience, do you have advice for someone who thinks they might want to write children's books or even young adult books? Sure. Just start writing. Don't sit there and go, okay, I got to think of the best opening sentence ever. If you do that, you'll never get past the opening sentence. Just write and go back and then you can start working on it. Think of, think of your story as a, a mud of clay and you're going to take it and you're going to shape it and you're going to mold it. And by the time you finish, you're going to have your story. But if you just write one sentence and go, I don't know if that's really the right way to open it up. And then, you know, 30 minutes later, I don't know if that's the right way. And then you're just stuck there. And I don't want you to be stuck. I just want you to write. Yeah. Oh, fear of fear of failure, failure, or, you know, if that perfectionism can be a hard way to start. Yes. 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 And goodness we- gracious, I did not uh publish the first things that I wrote, there's a probably about 20 stories that were my first things. And that is not what was published first. So if that helps inspire anybody. Sure. Yeah, that makes sense. When you take time to read just for you, what are your favorite um, genres and who are some of your favorite authors? You know, I've always enjoyed reading um, biographies from from all different authors, I really don't have a favorite author. It just depends on the person that I might be interested in at the time. But right now, I'm actually stuck on all the books that are being written by this TV historian, Herbie J. Pilato, um, because I love TV and I love the movies. And so Herbie Pilato, I don't know if you've heard of him or not, but he writes the most amazing 
Oh, you have? Oh, good. He writes the most amazing books. Um, Bewitched was really good. And then he wrote about Elizabeth Montgomery, who starred in Bewitched. And I was just amazed at Elizabeth's career and learned so much. And then his retro, t- retro television, I'm like totally into right now. I'm reading that one because it talks about a lot of television shows that I had uh, growing up, as well as some that uh, my children had. And then actually I gave some of his books away for um, Christmas gifts because I knew that uh, my one brother was into Sean Connery. And so he wrote a whole fabulous book about Sean Connery. So anyway, I could go on and on because he has many of them. But um, um, that's that's where I am right now today is Herbie J. Pilato's books. Okay. And how about... Uh... Some favorite children's books you read with your your children or even your grandchildren? Oh, my gosh. Where do I start? So there's um, the latest books that were um, out right now that I started reading to my grandson is um, Sandy Boy about a horse. And uh, so you have Sandy Boy's New Home, Sandy Boy at Christmas time, and and it's just uh, – it's just really fun, and the pictures are so gorgeous. For my children growing up, it all, it you know, it was all so different. In fact, if you could see my story garden here, I have books all the way back from when my mama was little. So um, I would read the kids. I'm trying to think, of course, you could never go wrong with Spot. Spot was one of the very favorite books when they were super little. And then we moved into the Nancy Drew books. And so they really were brought up on more of the classics like that, that are considered classics now that um I grew up, grew up with. So. Thank you. Uh, social media presence. So, um, or internet presence. Uh, if you have a website, can you tell people where to find that and any social media that you are active on? Sure. So I'm going to spell my name because I don't spell it the common way. So my website is D-I-A-N-N-F-L-O-Y-D-B-O-E-H-M dot com, Diane dot com. And I'm on a lot of social media. So I'm on LinkedIn, Facebook. Instagram, Pinterest, almost every, almost everyone except for TikTok. I don't do TikTok. Okay. Oh, you have one of those last names that probably very rarely gets pronounced correctly. Oh, that's right. It's my husband's name. Beam, bomb, boom, boom. I get so that it's a great way of knowing the person really doesn't know you. And, and, uh, Floyd is my maiden name. And I had promised my dad a long time ago that I mean, he asked me if I, ever you know really got published if I would use uh, my maiden name and so I said well daddy I'll start right now and so Diane Floyd Bain there you go I love it um yeah actually uh when you were spelling it I, w- I was thinking I need to remind my I need to remember to ask her to pronounce her last name so I can pronounce yeah. it correctly so thank you for doing that yeah <laughs> actually my husband walked into my kindergarten class one day on the first day of school. I'd forgotten something. And he saw that I wrote B-A-M-E up there on the board. And he goes, why is our name spelled like that? And I said, I'm not teaching a five-year-old that an O-E is equal to the sound of a long A. So, therefore, it's B-A-M-E, BAME. <laughs> That's uh, yes, I completely support that plan. Because <laughs> um, you're starting to teach the kids phonics, and that'll just totally throw them off. There's so many exceptions to every rule. They can just start out simply. Yes, um, that's right. Well, Diane, we've we've covered a lot, but is there anything that we haven't talked about that you wanted to make sure that you highlighted during our time together? No, I think we pretty much covered everything. Um, obviously, you can find my books on Amazon um, in Barnes and Noble and on all the Amazons around the world. So if it's EU or AU for Australia and so forth, the Middle East. And, um, so I'm really easy to find. I absolutely, I have a newsletter that comes out, um, every month and I would love people to sign up for my newsletter. And I absolutely love 
receiving emails. I just love hearing people's ideas or what they thought about a book, et cetera. And I really thank you for having me. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. I love your enthusiasm. Um, Thank you for introducing me to Charlie. You're quite welcome. I hope we speak again. Thank you once again to Diane for joining me, for taking the time to talk about Charlie and some of her other writings, uh, her young adult historical fiction, everything that we spoke about during our time together. Thank you, Diane, for that conversation. If you are looking for a new children's book or your new children's book author even, or you've got children in your life, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, next door neighbors that you like to give books to, whatever it is, you might want to check out Diane's books and see if they are something that you would like to share with the young people in your lives. I actually just remembered that I need to get my soon to be great nephew a book. I'm going to be a great aunt in February. I cannot believe that. I am so excited. He will be born in February is due first part of February, which is coming up really soon. And I need to spoil him rotten with books, of course. So looking forward to that. Can't wait to see him um, and meet him some one of these days when I get back to the States. Very, very excited. You probably could not tell. Um, anyway, yes. So if you have small children in your life or that you like to buy books for, then maybe check out Diane's books and see if they are something that you and your littles might like. I am love buying children's books. When I'm on TikTok or on Book Talk and everybody's talking about the massive amounts of books that they have, I agree. I, I love books for myself, but I have always... I have no children, but I have always had a very large collection of children's books. For various parts of my career, I have had children's books. I also have them just because I have nostalgic children's books from my own childhood, books that I love that I've found over the years. Yeah, I have a very extensive, well, before we moved, I had a very extensive collection of children's books, and uh, they're one of my favorite things to buy. Anyway, thank you for joining me for this episode, of course. I hope that you'll join me for Friday when we should have a second episode this week. It should be Logan Steiner talking about that book, After Anne, which is a historical fiction based on the life of L.M. Montgomery, Lucy Maud Montgomery, the author of Anne of Green Gables, that whole series. Um, let's, you know, I'm, I'm just not going to make it a, po- a an absolute this time because who knows what's going to happen in the world and scheduling, but that should be on Friday. And I hope that you will join me for that. As always, if you're a fan of the podcast, make sure you like, subscribe, follow, write a review, leave a starred review with the, the liking and subscribing will get you episodes whenever they come out. For instance, When they come out at weird times, you will know when a new episode is out. The reviewing helps so much to get this podcast out to other listeners, and I greatly appreciate all the reviews that have been left and given. The feedback is always wonderful and helpful. And of course, you can follow the podcast and by extension me on social media, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram. I say it every week, mean it every week or every episode. I love hearing from you. Come find the podcast and, by extension, me (laughs) on these social media platforms and tell me what you've been reading, etc., etc., etc. I hope your week is off to a great start. We are already nine days into 2024. We are just flying through this year so far, but I hope it's off to a great start. And whatever you've got going on this week, whether your schedule is a little wonky or not, I hope you find plenty of time to get yourself lost in a good book. Thanks so much. Talk to you next time. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from Move to music, from sports, to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.